Hello and welcome. My name is Carrie Flass Poehler and I'm the Gallery Director of Finlandia University Gallery and I'm here to introduce the video tour of Karen Stewart. She is the 30th annual Finnish American artist in a series that was started in 1991 to celebrate prominent Finnish American artists and their contributions to the creative endeavor. This exhibit is titled SISU and it runs through January 5th, 2021. Please email gallery at finlandia.edu to schedule an appointment to see the exhibit in person. This 2017 self-portrait, a mixed media work on paper, is entitled Sporting My O'Keefe Hat. Now Karen Stewart will tell us about her piece SISU which depicts her grandmother, her mother, and her seven aunts, created in 2019. So the title of this piece is Sisu, which in my understanding in Finnish means tenacity or grit, um, stoic determination, which I think very much described my mother here, uh, her seven sisters, and in the middle is my grandmother, her mother. Uh, there's so much here, but um, First of all, I really like, I was teaching high school art and um, I was teaching AP art history specifically. So a lot of the work in this show incorporates things that I was teaching and, you know, talking to my students about at the time. So this piece is a triptych and I like that, um, just that religious feel of the traditional triptychs that you would see in the church. And um, the sepia color is very important to me because, or the burnt sienna, because um, growing up as we would go up to Hurley, Wisconsin, which is where my mother was born and raised, um, there was a lot of iron in the water at that time. And so all of my aunts, every sink in their homes had like a rust spot underneath where the water would run from the faucet. And the water just tasted horribly like iron. And so that reddish burnt sienna or sepia color just sticks with me when I think of Hurley, Wisconsin at that time. Um, my mother's family emigrated here around 1900 and indeed my grandfather and my great-grandfather both worked in the mines. So in this piece, there's just so much, but the women's dresses are all um, collage parts out of books that women would have read throughout the years. Uh, my Aunt Martha's Hints from Heloise. My mother is actually Liz Smith's book called The Mother Book. And so they all have quotes from these books. There's um, a book that my mother got when she got married to my father, a very conservative religious book about the roles of wives and the roles of husbands. Um, and the particular text with each one of these women is specific for them. Being my mother, she has the mother book written on her. Her name was Lily, and I found out later that um, Lily of the Valley is the national flower of Finland, so I thought that was just perfect. Perch are the national fish, there's a type of swan that's the national bird, and I like the fact that this pair of swans appears to be flying away from the Finnish flag, but more towards the American flag because they had all emigrated here. Uh, my grandmother was so homesick when she got here, they actually went back to Finland and um, got stuck there during World War I. So a number of my aunts were actually born in Finland. Lots of stuff on the bottom. Um, I really like, in particular, speaking of the art history, the fact that Picasso's Women of uh, Avignon, or the Les Demoiselles, is there. Um, it's no coincidence that she, this piece is, um, with a picture of one of my uncles. There's a pretty tragic story uh, based around that. Sadly, being in Hurley, Wisconsin in the early part of the 1900s, uh, there was some alcoholism in the, in the family line and um, I put that bottle there and lots of things that the women were asked to do at that time, crocheting and uh, knitting and whether you liked it or not. And um, so there's just a lot of symbolism here. Nature's Symphony and the African Queen are two large-scale quilt paintings created in 2017. Artist Karen Stewart will share with us some of the symbolism of these two paintings. All right, there are three um, quilt and painting combos in this show, and I'm standing between two of them here. I do want to point out that they are um, collaborations that I did with a fiber artist named Jennifer Block. 
a uh, true, uh, true fiber artist. But um, in this one, it depicts my ex, my first mother-in-law. Uh, she was from Ghana and she's wearing the traditional Ashanti clothing. Um, and it is surrounded by a frame made of kente cl um, cloth. Um, there's aquaba dolls around her for her six children that she had. She's under the umbrella like an Ashanti king would be, almost she would be a queen. And she's holding a white man's Bible, which I really like. Uh, the three influences uh, in Africa, Muslim, Christian, and the traditional tribal influence. So all these things coming together in this one piece. And this piece is called Nature Symphony. Um, the frame is, is sewn here to look like a wooden frame. And um, it's just this plethora of, of florals and um, playing the instrument in the middle. And again, just that uh, female gaze of a woman in a, a beautiful floral dress and a beautiful floral, floral location. This piece is entitled The Three Graces. It depicts my daughter, Joelle, her friends, Taylor and Jamie. And going along with that art history theme, of course, it's the Greek mythology of the graces, but it also incorporates the Renaissance tradition of pointing within a piece of art. And in this case, it's pointing down at the symbols of the graces, the myrtle, the dice, and then in the other corner is the rose. This piece also brings to mind, for me, the male gaze in art. And Thinking of the Gorilla Girls, I'm a little bit tired of the male gaze. So you'll see in this piece and in all of the pieces of the show, the women are clothed and um, not only are they clothed, but there's a lot of detail in their clothing. I always say, I think I, I got my drawing chops honed drawing um, at Life Drawing Co-ops over the years, but now I'm beyond that and I'm more comfortable putting the women clothed to show how they depict themselves or how they show themselves out in society. I call these two drawings depression and manic. They actually depict the same person who suffers with bipolar disease. And she sent me a picture of herself without her dentures, uh, which was quite jarring at the time. At first, she thought it was hilarious. And when I said, could I please use these in, in an art piece? She said, absolutely. She gave me her permission wholeheartedly. Um, she has three beings that when she is in a real deep, dark state, um, talk to her, suggest scary things and kind of torment her. And I've depicted them as these crows pulling at her hair. And I've depicted her in an itchy sweater and I want her fingers to look like the talons of the birds. And she struggles to get anything done, anything. And so she does have a coffee cup that says, get shit done. And, and I've depicted it uh, here as she's hunched over her keyboard, very isolated and alone at her keyboard. And the other one, um, she told me a story that she headed out into her yard and a veritable flock of butterflies surrounded her in this just beautiful, beautiful uh, array of color of orange. And so I've depicted her here with the delight of being with these butterflies that may or may not have ever been there. But I like the fact that her mouth, again, her toothless mouth, sort of looks like the wings of the butterfly. I call this piece, Cancer's Not for Chickens. It depicts my niece who ha had a Hodgkin's lymphoma and she has since uh, cancer free. So it to me is a happy piece in the sense that she's wearing what she referred to as her lucky chemo shirt. And she she's just the most healthy person in the world. Sometimes you just don't understand why these things happen to people. She grow up, she raises her own chickens, makes her own, you know, everything, balms and lotions, everything. She she eats healthy and she still had Hodgkin's lymphoma. So um, I like that I introduced the watercolor in this particular drawing because I've always felt like uh, the pink sort of uh, refers to her blood vessels and the various, the chemo coursing through her body, this somewhat difficult treatment that ended up, you know, hopefully saving her life. These beautifully rendered large-scale paintings are really best enjoyed in person. Please email me at gallery at finlandia.edu to set up a time to see them. Thanks for visiting.